Let's talk markets right now. Joining us with some insights as to what we can expect as we wind down the year and look to 2024 is Paul Zemsky. He is chief investment officer and the founder of the multi-asset strategies and solutions team at Voya Investment Management. Oh, yeah. And uh, Paul, let's talk a little bit about this. Yesterday with the declines we saw in markets, the worst day since September, it had people starting to ask, have we run too far too fast? You've got a, a, a pretty resounding no when it comes to that. Why is it? Absolutely. So, look, the fundamentals are strong. Markets are going to be up next year. So on any week or any day, sure, we can have a pullback, as we saw yesterday, but we're even recovering some of that this morning. But when you look at the fundamentals, you look at earnings, you look at what's going on in interest rates, you look at what's happening with inflation, um, people were way too pessimistic at the beginning of this year. They're still not fully invested. And yeah, you could try and time the market, get out now, maybe get in next week. But if you do that, you're going to miss the big rally next year. You know, the only thing that concerns me with that is, again, last year, people, every single person we put on this show was talking about how last year was a year for concern, a year for caution. Markets took off. This year, it seems like everyone we're putting on thinks next year is going to be huge. What's the risk to that? What's the downside scenario? Yeah, well, 2023, you know, never have so many people been so wrong by so much. But, um, you know, I, I, I really think that next year is setting up to be, to be a positive year. We're not predicting 20% returns, but look at the fundamentals, right? We have a situation where interest rates are coming down. Profits are going to be up. And, you know, I think what, what people missed in 2023 was that the consumer and the private sector were in great shape. We follow this kind of wonkish indicator called the private sector financial balance. And when that's positive, that means corporations and individuals are in net positive saving mode. And it was almost impossible for that not to be the case, given how big the federal budget deficits were, because they have to balance. And there was never a time in U.S. history when there was a recession when the private sector financial balance was positive. So, yes, I'm cautious. I'm a little bit nervous that, you know, we're now with the consensus, whereas last year was we're not. But that doesn't mean the market still can't have a decent high single digit, you know, returns in 2024. Do you think a recession is coming this year? No, I think we'll have a slowdown. You know, I, I don't think if you look at the if you look at GDP, if GDP is up half a percent or minus half a percent, that's going to feel recession-y, but it's not really that deep a recession. But the thing also that gives us comfort is the Fed can really decide how big a recession they want. If, if inflation continues to come down as we think it will, there's, you know, 500 basis points between here and zero on the Fed funds rate. The Fed can really start the economy up again pretty quickly if they want to. Imagine what a 3% mortgage rate would do for this country, right? Okay, but here's my concern with that, Paul. Why yeah. in the world would the Fed cut rates like that if they're not in a recession? I mean, it's this, this expectation that the market is going to get rate cuts and this say, at the same time, this expectation that the economy is not really gonna, going to be bad. And I don't know that there's a scenario where both of those things play out. Why, why would the Fed go back to these ridiculously low interest rates? I thought we were trying to get back to a more normal, unless there's a pretty big recession to deal with. Well, that's, yes. Yeah. So, so the base case is that the federal cuts rates, Fed will cut rates models. Because remember, as inflation comes down, real rates are going up. So if the Fed did nothing, they'd be tightening as inflation came down. They don't, they don't want that. So they need to cut rates. 100 basis points or so next year just to stay as tight as they are today. But I'm saying if we did have a deeper recession, the Fed could cut rates and turn that around very quickly. Because remember, we're not in a situation where we're having a financial crisis. The banks are in great shape. So if the Feds would, if the Fed saw a deep recession and needed to cut, there'd be plenty of ways of getting that money back into the system and we could turn things around really quickly. If you had a chance to ask Fed Chairman Jay Powell a question right now, what would it be? Because I think the entire market is kind of swirling around this right now, this idea that, yeah, we think rate cuts are coming. We think the economy is going to do pretty well. And your question to Jay Powell would be what? I'd want to know how worried he is about the commercial real estate sector, because that's, for us, that's the only thing that could really hurt the banking system. The banking system's intact. When the Fed eases, they hit the gas right away. We haven't had that situation in a while. We've had financial crises the last few recessions. The banking system's intact. Commercial real estate doesn't hurt it. The Fed hits the gas, and we're off we go again. So that would be my question. Does he worry about the commercial real estate market? Paul, that gets me back to the same thing, though. If if he is not worried about the commercial real estate market and 
he's not worried about the economy because things are going pretty well. Why is he going to cut rates now? It's just, it's hard for me to imagine this perfect scenario that the market seems to have laid out where we're getting rate cuts and the economy is not really going to suffer. Well, um, not rate cuts today, but probably our best guess, April or May. Again, so that as inflation comes down, right, the, if, if the Fed funds rate is 5% and inflation drops 100 basis points, we've seen a 100 basis point rise in the real rates. So the Fed got tighter. So I think Powell will cut just to make sure that he follows inflation down. So he needs to follow inflation down so he doesn't make the Fed actually tighten more in a real rate sense. And I don't think they want to get any tighter here. So while they're not going to put the pedal to the metal, I don't think they want to get any tighter. And it's a little, you know, technically to do that, they have to ease. So in order to, they, the Fed will follow inflation down to make sure they don't get tighter than they are today.